when we're kids, we don't always know that we're not in the, that our experience isn't always the normal one. I wondered if there was a moment you can remember when you realized that your childhood might not be the same as other kids that you knew. Oh, that's a beautiful question. I think there were, there were a couple of those moments. Um, I grew up in Minnesota and my family was really religious and I loved God. I loved church. I loved all that stuff. Um, and at the same time, it was kind of a dark thing sometimes. Mm. Like when I was in turning eight, my friend got me a Destiny's Child CD for my birthday. Uh-huh. And my dad like shut down the party. I had to go to the basement for the rest of the party oh. because it was like evil, secular music. Stop. Yeah. And I, I you know, and back then I was like, OK, I'm just holier than these people. But a few years later, it it made more sense when my dad picked me up from school and pulled over the car and was like, I've thought a lot about this and I'm changing my name mm-hmm. and um, and I'm going to be a woman now. Mm-hmm. And I felt this huge sense of relief. Like I knew that my life was different and I had kind of felt that way for a while. Yeah. But then I was like, okay, this is an explanation for why my childhood has been like so strict and why my parent has been so mean to me sometimes. And I really thought, okay, things are going to be a lot better now. Wow. It sounds like, too, you're just – your love for your dad sounds like it was – you You felt such um... – love for their new expression and at the same time that must have been a very strange and difficult time to be understanding different gender identities other people were definitely like scandalized yeah in our community wow yeah and we're like this is a huge either people were like this is a huge sin um and emmy is like messed up now and will be for the rest of her life or people were like this is perfect, and you're going to have two smiling mommies. Uh huh. And then you ne- and then you never ended up with an idealized portrait of either. You're very sensitive about that. I really appreciate it. You were like, everybody was having issues, and then you say it in the nicest way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I yeah. I mean, I I feel like it's it's also just honest, right? Where like there were so many years where people just didn't know enough trans people are enough enough about being trans Mm -hmm. that there were all these like stereotypes out there and it was I know we're not looking for bright sides here but it has been really wonderful as the child of a trans person to see this awareness and to be able to be like okay now I can speak more freely about what my childhood was actually like yeah your parents divorce your dad's transition this really difficult custody battle over you um these are so like such big tender forks in the road for you what were things like with you and your mom at that time I loved my mom um she had been the primary breadwinner and had been um away a lot like during my childhood and during the custody battle I moved in with her when I was around 11, and she won full custody. But she had a problem with compulsive shopping and hoarding. Mm. And before that time, it had kind of been like a fun quirk. Like, she would go to Target and come back with, like, 100 wristwatches that had been on sale for a dollar each. Wow. Yeah. Um, but, but I had never been kind of in the middle of it. And suddenly I was. And that put... It put a lot of strain on our relationship. And then also that dynamic that's so common to kids in custody battles where my mom was like, you know, I I saved you, right? I spent all this money and all this time to like rescue you from your father and you're not grateful for it. I see. Yeah. Yeah. And she was totally right. I was absolutely not grateful for it. Not at all. (laughs) Like, yes. I was like, could I just have both parents? Like, yes. is that okay? That's so you know? funny. Grateful is never a word a kid who's losing 
their other version of home is ever going to feel. Yeah. At the same time, I, I feel for her. You know, I feel for her. Like, she was in a horrible marriage. Like, in hindsight, it's like, my parents' marriage was bad. Mm. And I think it was bad for both of them and way worse for my mom. Mm. Um, and, you know, and... And my dad's behavior, like, affected, it affected me, too. But, you know, I think divorce has this special property where it can take a bad situation and people who have problems, and it can just amplify those problems yeah. to the nth degree. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, she was she was in a crappy marriage, and then suddenly she has, like, legal debt. She's a single parent. Um, yeah. Her kid is not happy to be with her. It was a tough, it was a tough situation and she was coping the way she coped, Mm -hmm. which was in the Walgreens clearance section, in the Home Depot clearance section, and all that stuff was coming back home. Oh my gosh. At that time, did it just sort of like multiply the, like the worse it got for her financial, emotionally, then the worse your living environment became? Absolutely. Yeah. And I hadn't realized how my dad's controlling behavior had kept oh. my mom's hoarding in check. I see. And suddenly she was free and she was going to use that freedom to buy, buy, buy. Yeah. And so we lived in an apartment with like every single surface had a pile of stuff on it. And the kitchen countertops, they were full. Mm-hmm. And so we would pull out the drawers and then there would be a pile of stuff on top of all the drawers. Like on top of the oven, in front of the oven, yeah. like in front of the washing machine. And so there were only these like narrow paths between the rooms, like within the course of maybe a year. Mm. Mm. Oh, hon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I know. <laughs> so then like, you know, friends coming over, not an option. Like being able to take care of yourself easily, not an option. Yeah, the rule was like, do not let anyone inside under any circumstance, yeah. especially somebody from the government. I see. And like the shower, pretty soon it was filled with stuff. It was like, you know, my mom would do like towel baths. Is that what you call it? Uh-huh. Where you do like, I think people say like bits, oh. <laughs> bits and another word that rhymes with that. Um, and that was like the way that we... That, I like how yeah, we both paused because we both knew that. What people normally call it. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we had mice, like, the mice were fearless. They would just, like, run across the room, and they knew we couldn't stop them. Yeah. Um, And and I got really sick. Like, I had a hacking cough. And I was, I think I had a pretty good attitude, like, for being a pissy, like, 10-year-old who didn't want to be with my mom. I I think I had a pretty good, like, level head about the situation. Um, but when I, when the house was going badly and when, you know, I was having conflicts with my mom, she was like, you're not okay. Like you are traumatized by your dad. Like we have to take you to therapy. And that was really when the big problems started for me. Like everybody always talks about therapy, like it's the solution and like, it's always a good thing. Yes. But like I went to therapy and that was like my funeral as a child. Like that was when things were going to get really bad. 